I went to see my bestie Agatha in London and she took me to Museum of Victoria and Albert in London and we had an amazing time. For some reason I thought this is a tiny little museum. i never been there before and I couldn't be any more wrong. So this museum has over 2.8 million objects that span over 5,000 years of human creativity. Apparently, Queen Victoria was very shocked by the nudity of a full-size plaster cast of Michelangelo's David. A little fig leaf was made and hung on the figure using a pair of hooks when anyone imported visited. So today, the fig leaf is no longer used. The scale of those objects is absolutely breathtaking. It's really difficult to see on the camera here, but they are huge and really impressive. Those impressive columns were casts made of Trajan columns in Damascus. They took over seven years to complete and standing currently in Rome. Napoleon III, which is a nephew of the Napoleon Bonaparte, has ordered to make those casts and then museum has bought those. It is 35.6 meters high and being too tall to fit in the galleries, it's displayed as two separate towers. The detail of all this painting is absolutely incredible. You really have to see it live. If you have a chance, come and visit this museum. And this is a young Victoria. Here is a massive collection of jewelry. There's also upstairs area and you have them segregated by different times and eras. Here we can see Queen Victoria's sapphire and diamond coronet designed by her beloved husband, Prince Albert. There are 200,000 paintings and drawings. Paintings by Edwin Henry Lancier, John Constable, Rossetti, Turner, Francis Darnby, and many, many more. It's so wonderful to take a look at the artwork so close. It's nothing like seeing it live.
These huge pictures are actually the Raphael's cartoons, full-scale designs for tapestry, commissioned by Vatican for Sistine Chapel. Contrary to popular belief, hardly any of the V&A's collection belong to Queen Victoria or Pr Prince Albert. The most notable exception is a famous series of paintings, the Raphael's cartoons, which we can see here. And they are loaned by Queen Victoria and are still on loan from the present king. During the Second World War, most of the v &A collections were evacuated. The Raphael cartoons were too large to evacuate during the war and were bricked up into a protective shelter. The museum was hit repeatedly by bombs during the Second World War. Some bomb damage to the front of the building on the exhibition road was never repaired but was left as a memorial to the enduring values of this great museum in a time of conflict. The worst scandal in the V&A history occurred in the 1950s when a member of staff was found to have stolen several hundred objects, including a number of swords, which he smuggled out of the museum down his trousers legs. Hello, hello. In the early 1980s, after a flood and basement, damaged books were taken and put in freezers at Harrods department store until they could be restored. There are seven miles of galleries in the V&A. Melville bed from the Melville house. It was a state bed which was designed to accommodate a monarch. The Great Bed of Ware is Britain's most famous bed, made in the 1590s, is over 11 feet long and 10 feet wide. It's mentioned in Shakespeare play Twelfth Night. In 1913, suffragettes threatened to vandalize collections in public museums and galleries. The VA considered banning women visitors, but instead decided to protect the collections by increasing number of visitors. Entrance charges were dropped to help achieve this. I hope you enjoyed this little trip uh, with us and I would highly recommend visiting this place. Uh, there are other museums around like Natural History Museum or Science Museum. The closest tube station is South Kensington and the entry to museum is free. At the end, we decided to go for a little sweet treat and coffee and we went to the right opposite to the little cafe and it was delicious. I hope you enjoyed this little trip. Until next time, bye.